The Thai government will release the findings from an official probe this week after launching an investigation into the office tower that collapsed during Friday's earthquake. The skyscraper was the only building that crumbled in Thailand. At least 13 people are dead. More than 70 are still missing. Officials say initial tests indicate the presence of substandard steel among the wreckage of the state audit office building that was under construction. An anti-corruption watchdog had also previously flagged irregularities about the building on the, of the 30-story structure. Bangkok has ordered a safety audit of all buildings in the Thai capital. This is currently underway and is expected to be completed within two weeks. For a closer look at the growing concerns about building safety in Bangkok, Nat Lilawat, Associate Professor of Industrial Engineering at Chulalongkorn University, joins us live. Professor, thank you for making the time to speak with us. There have been many videos yeah, circulating welcome. of that moment that the under construction building came crashing down. What were your initial thoughts when you saw that? Oh, okay. I think uh, because of that, uh, it's created not only me, but uh, the public anxiety and panics in, in the region of Bangkok. Uh, anyway, I, I would say that the, the earthquake and the corrupt of the building can contribute to the awareness of the people in the region that now many people uh, know that we require the earthquake resistant buildings and also the standard and structures. Uh, I would say that in, in Thailand, especially in Bangkok, we have experience of uh, earthquake less than some other country or uh, even on the north part of Thailand, they may have uh, more experience than people in Bangkok. And the lifestyle in, in Bangkok is also different from, from other regions in Thailand that they are the capital city and they live in the vertical living lifestyle. So most of people live in uh, the tall buildings uh, for their life, for their work, for their studies. And once something happens, that's, yeah, of course, they, they need to evolve create out and after evacuate out from the areas, uh, of course, many people evacuate and they find some uh, SMB point in the outdoor area. But I, I would say that uh, most of the uh, SMB points have been prepared for like fire incident or something that will occur to some building, not like the whole area, right? So uh, on Friday, then the, the quake shakes many areas in Bangkok and, and other nearby cities. So a lot of people came down in order to work it out. And of course, they have limited space for the SMB point and the outdoor area nearby the, the skyscrapers. That's why it, uh, it's caused the traffic jams. It's also paralyzed uh, the infrastructure of transportation because uh, many people in Bangkok rely on the sky train, subway, and so on. So yeah, it became paralyzed at that moment. Where were you when the earthquake struck? Did you and any others receive any warning or alert from authorities? Okay, yeah, in uh, for me myself at that time, yeah, I, I did not get the SMS yes on the moment, but yeah, later on, yeah, we, we have received it. I think this is another issue that, yeah, we have to say to why the, the message and warning became delayed. Of course, warning for earthquake is difficult and, and it may be hard, but after the, the quake already occurs, probably the, the population should receive the, the message, right? In Thailand, the organization that takes care of uh, the warnings distribution is a national disaster warning center, uh, belong to the Department of the Disaster Prevention and Management. Uh, they prepare the, the message in order to make the warning, but uh, it's far delayed because uh, they still use the SMS distribution system that they can distribute only 100,000 to 200,000 messages per one batch. And between the batch, they have to wait about 15 minutes. That's why, yeah, it's, it's caused this issue of the delay of the warnings through the SMS. And also the foreigners who, who use the SIM card in Thailand, also some of them did not get any message from that. The, the point is that uh, I think this one called for the the cell broadcast systems in the country that uh, right now the government is preparing and doing the testings. I think uh, the Thai Prime Minister also pushed uh, the process of uh, implementing the cell broadcast to be as soon as possible due to this incident. Thailand is no stranger to earthquakes since in a region that is at risk of such activity. So how are high-rise buildings normally designed to ensure that they can withstand such earthquakes? Okay, uh, in Thailand, based on the uh, building court, from the law of Thailand, the building that has been constructed uh, after 2007, yeah, they have to follow this standard and they will have the, the structure that can 
can survive in in the earthquakes, and and you see that uh, based on the news, there are many many cracks and many uh, uh, scratch not into the structures of the buildings. Most of the building just uh, the surface issue that they have right now from the preliminary risk uh, assessment. Although some have uh, medium and high, but yeah, I, I believe that most of the building who uh, that constructed after 2007 should should be fine for that. Uh, anyway, if you are the people who live in those buildings, I, I would remind you that you also have to check the crack and the risk. If you are not a professional, it's necessary that we should have some civil engineer or structural engineer who come to help checking those kind of uh, structures of the buildings before we can resume to use the buildings. And since Friday until now, yeah, there are many groups of uh, engineers from the government, from Bangkok and others that help making the team work on uh, risk assessment to many of the buildings in Bangkok already. Regulation in Thailand when it comes to building safety are buildings regularly inspected? Yes, of course. Yeah, for for the buildings, uh, since before they can construct, they yeah, they have to be investigated and also checked uh, for all the material and structures based on the regulation and the law. So there have been a lot of concerns about the building that collapsed. Um, there's been reports that mm -hmm. maybe substandard steel may have been used. How are authorities dealing with these allegations? I think we have to say uh, the result of the investigation that yeah, they are working on that investigation using the officers from, from the government as well as uh, they also use uh, a lot of the professional engineers who observe the issue right now. You mentioned that a lot of buildings in Bangkok are currently being inspected to make sure that they are structurally secure. What happens if they're found mm. to have issues? How do you rectify this? Okay. Uh, uh, the, the simple way to explain is that yeah, the, they try to uh, color the buildings like green, yellow, and red. For the green one, yeah, it's very safe. They, they can use immediately the yellows. It uh, probably needs some more inspection from the proficient in order to recheck again. And the red color is mean the building that uh, has been severely damaged and they will not be allowed for the people to enter those buildings. Yeah, so, so right now the government tried to inspect and we found most of the buildings in Bangkok are color green at this moment. Yeah, some are yellow. What improvements do you think needs to be made in future to prevent such buildings from collapsing? I think uh, the, the, the thing about the constructions, uh, I would say from, from my civil engineers colleagues here, uh, clearly many people focus on investment to the decoration of the building like interior designs, uh, architectural design and others. But the point that uh, we need to make in the beginning for the building is the structural uh, investment of the buildings. Yeah, the stronger the buildings, the better. And also we have to follow the regulation of the earthquake resistant and others because uh, I believe that uh, the earthquakes will, will be again in, in the regions and also we may have more experience in the futures. Thank you, Professor, for sharing your insights with us. We were speaking to Nat Lilawat, Associate Professor of Industrial Engineering at Chulalongkorn University.